Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Joins, Mayor of Winston-Salem, and it's uh, my pleasure to be here today in some ways, and in some ways I'm not happy to be here. But he says it's a bittersweet day as we are here to uh, congratulate and uh, thank Lee Garrity for the work he's done for the city of Winston-Salem. City Council and I, and you'll hear from them in a moment, are all here to, to say how much we appreciate Lee's work in the past 32 years for the city of Winston-Salem, including 17 years as city manager. I say it's bittersweet, even though we're congratulating him and thanking him, it's bittersweet in that we will certainly miss him. We'll miss his calm, steady, and innovative leadership in our city. We'll miss uh, his, quote, get it done attitude and his uh, uh, wor strong work ethic. And Lee, you know, you brought the highest level of ethics to our city, adhering very strongly to the city county management code of ethics. So you're an example of very of that uh, particular organization. You know, uh, a city manager, a city manager, may be the hardest job that I know about. <laughs> you got to work with nine elected officials. We all have our own agendas and programs and projects we want to try to get done for our constituents, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it makes your job difficult as you're juggling all those things. You're also responsible for 2,400 city employees making sure that they're being treated equitably and fairly and that uh, they're encouraged and motivated to do a good job for our citizens. And then finally, the citizens, you're responsible to 252,000 citizens of Winston-Salem, making sure that they're receiving the highest possible level of service that, that, they can, that we can do for them. Well, I would say, Lee, that uh, you've accomplished all three of those in a, in a great way over the past 17 years as manager that I've enjoyed working with you, going all, and before then, going all the way back when you were director of efficiency and the studies that we did, the efficiency studies and things like that, you've clearly demonstrated then that you know how to innovate and bring new uh, uh, systems and new programs to our city. So we will miss you, but we wish you the best. You've certainly earned a great retirement, and I know you will. You, you will. Now my pleasure now to uh, introduce or ask uh, Mayor Pro Tem Denise Adams to come up with comments. And we have other council members who are here that uh, I'll just ask them to come up one at a time and introduce yourself and go from there. So Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Thank you. First time I met Lee Garrity was 2009 in December uh, when I got elected to the city council. I had heard his name, but I'd never really had any interaction with him. I remember that the following year, after I'd been there a year, uh, it was time to do performance reviews for the city manager, city attorney. Those are the only people that the council basically is the manager or employ. And I remember Lee sent me, or his staff, uh, in our weekly mailings, the Thursday package, they sent me the paper forms for the review. Yeah, you laughing, you remember. <laughs> they had paper performance review papers for us to fill out like 20 pieces of paper and put the review. I called Lee up, I said, what is this? He said, it's the, the papers for the review for the city attorney. I told Lee, I said, I'm not doing no paper review for nobody. <laughs> And he was like, well, this is the way we're doing it. We're looking at this, that, and the other. I said, Lee, I work for Johnson Controls, and we've been doing electronic performance reviews since 1997. <laughs> I said, I can help with this. And Lee was like, OK, let's connect HR, the folks at JCI, and we get their corporate documentation, their app, a sample to see how it was done. And at that point then, the following year, everybody's evaluations and performance reviews were done for, done electronically. All of that to say that the one thing I can say about legality is every suggestion or initiative that I brought him, if it wasn't going to fly, he'd tell me it wasn't going to fly. But he'd also try to work to make it happen. And I thank you for that, whether it was the hydroponics facility <laughs> and other things. I thank you for when I wanted to take the city employee wage to $16 years ago, and you told me it had to be progressively implemented. 
When I told you that I think the world of work is changing and we need to get with the program, he got with me along with the council. So the one thing that I want to thank him for in the world is his family, his wife, his daughter, his granddaughter, sons, and others. Thank you for giving the city of Winston-Salem legality for 31 years. Thank you. I'm the equal time tonight. You can hear from eight Democrats and one Republican. I'm going to do the best I can to balance it out. <laughs> there are two things that I had a profound influence on that affect why we're here tonight. The first is I'm the only councilman old enough that was here when we hired Lee 17 years ago. And the other thing is I absolutely insisted that we have shrimp tonight. <laughs> The only time I can eat shrimp is when the taxpayers pay for it, but I, I certainly appreciate them treating us tonight. Lee, we've been here a while. As I said, I've been on the council 22 years, and Lee's been city manager for 17. We went through 9-11, the Great Recession, COVID, which we're still going through, and what I'm calling the Great Inflation. We have persevered through it, Lee, and you have left the city a better place than you found it. You've had to put up with eight bosses at least, and I know my wife called a lot. We probably ought to put her in there. <laughs> I'd come home from work. She said, well, I called Lee on the trash when not picked up. I said, now, sweetie, if you just let me know, I can handle some of these things. <laughs> um, but she had always called it. But, but we, we have had... Um, it seems like we have jumped from one crisis to the next. And, and um, I have uh, three young children. are not young. They're, they're grown now. But I remember when 9-11 happened, I said, don't worry, guys. You're only going to go through one of these events once in your life. Then we went through the Great Recession. And I told them we're only going to go through this, these events once in your life. Then we had COVID. They did the same thing. And then it turned out, as, as an aside, both my sons work for internet startups, and they both bank with Silicon National Bank. <laughs> and I called them up and said, don't worry about it, uh, sons. Uh, it's going to be okay. <laughs> and then uh, that Sunday night, uh, Janet Yellen came on TV and said, don't worry, the banking crisis is covered. So I called them up and said, you know, um, I told you it was going to be okay. And they said, Dad, it's one thing when you tell us that. It's another thing when uh, Janet Yellen does. But, but Lee, we've been through all this. I appreciate everything you've done for it. And as someone who has just recently retired from my day job, um, it is a transition, but there is light on the other side of the hill, and you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much. As Robert mentioned, he's the only one among current council members who weren't here when, um, when Lee became uh, city manager. The rest of us have been onboarded by Lee. And without that guidance and that sort of shaping of what you should pay attention to and what you shouldn't and just let go, we'd all gone crazy. So I really appreciate that so much. Um, when I got on council, it was just after the 2008-2009 financial crisis, and I thought, oh, God, thank God I don't have to go through that. Then we had COVID. So, you know, we all, we all get our uh, little uh, opportunities in the, in the crisis world. But, Lee, thank you for all your guidance. Thank you for a conversation, whether it was about city council or not. And uh, so there are some large shoes to fill when you leave, leave your post. Well, you already have, but it's going to be tough to replace you. Thank you for everything. When I was elected to city council in 16, I was the only council member, to, the new council member coming on. So there was no class, there was no orientation program, there was just, here you are, here's your office, good luck. And uh, <laughs> fortunately I had some good help with a variety of colleagues and, and of course Lee Garrity. Lee has, Lee has a wonderful gift of communication and it's a skill and a, really it's more than a skill because it's gotta be something that's almost natural. And very quickly, he set up a program where he would meet with me every other week or so on Tuesdays for breakfast, and we'd eat and have a wonderful little conversation. And I was flattered that he'd give me the amount of time that he was giving me to 
discuss things that I wanted to hear, wanted to talk to him about, and whatever. Until one day I realized that we were eating up at Acadia Foods, which was a place in, up near Washington Park. And we'd eat up there every, every, uh, every time we'd meet. And I finally, finally made a suggestion, well, maybe we ought to go someplace else and eat. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. And I realized that it wasn't really my company he was after. He was after the food at Acadia Foods. <laughs> And, and, and in spite of being on a diet and a variety of other things that we wouldn't talk about too much, he managed to always eat breakfast there with me every day. So I appreciate it, but mostly it's his skill as a communicator, accessibility, and it'll be something I'll always appreciate and admire in him. And thank you, Lee, for all of that help and over the, all these two terms that I've served. We're gonna miss you greatly in the City Hall. Thank you. Tomorrow's Tuesday, so I'll see you at uh, theater. <laughs> What a privilege to be here today. What a beautiful picture. I hope uh, they will take this picture from this perspective uh, because, Lee, it's all about you. Um, and I knew you before I got on council, as I've known many of the people in this room when I was with Leadership Winston-Salem. What I remember, though, in that capacity, you always had great staff. We had, you had always had good people working. So whenever I came up with a crazy idea, we needed something, you always found someone who would appease me. And uh, I love that. Then I got on council, and I was sort of like John. I was a fish out of water, didn't know what to do. But I want to thank you so much for all of your direction and your guidance and making my attempt at serving the East Ward a real success. And I thank you so much. And now you're going into another season. And that season's going to be filled with all kinds of adventures that other people will tell you that you need to do. So just accept it. It comes with the territory. <laughs> uh, but I bought you a little something. I bought you a little gift to help you along your way. One is a, a book that I love to read because you need to take some time and just read a book. And it's about mystery and intrigue and stuff you don't know anything about. <laughs> uh, but I hope you'll like it. And then there's another little book, and it's called Soonish. It's a journal. So it's, you can do your memoirs, which I hope you would do. Start your bestseller. Or you can write down all those things people tell you, well, Lee, I need to fix this. I need you to come and do that. Just make that list of all those things and then decide whether you're going to do them or not. But I wish you the best. We are going to miss you. I know I will. But I'm going to visit your office and pretend you're there and that you're giving me the direction that I need until we get somebody else, which whenever that is. <laughs> but your spirit is there, and I know we, you know you're loved and you're well appreciated. I have good news. I'm the last one, I believe, of the city council members who is here today. My name is Kevin Mundy. I represent the Southwest Ward. Um, and, and I love going last because I can basically say what they said and walk away because they've covered all the points I was going to speak about. Uh, but John, you said it, you're right on target. When you join, when you uh, become a city council member, there is not an instruction manual. There's not an orientation book. They tell you very quickly what you can't do because you'll get in trouble legally, but you really have to learn from your, your comrades and your colleagues, well, don't become a new city council member during COVID. Because looking at people on a screen like this does not help you learn anything. So really, Lee was my go-to guy. We met one-on-one, -on -one and uh, he did, in fact, onboard me and teach me what the process was. 
And he knew that I'd never done this before, and he was very patient. It would take, take me a lot of questions. But he would finally tell me what the process was, and there might be six or eight steps. Nothing moves fast in city government. Every day is like watching a turtle race a snail. But he would tell me what the steps were, and I would go through the steps, and I still wouldn't get what I needed. And I'd go, Lee, what the heck? He said, I didn't tell you you'd get it. I just told you how you should go about getting it. But the other thing we discovered is we had a lot in common, and I think we were supposed to meet an hour every week, um, and, and we ended up meeting closer to an hour and a half because the first 45 minutes, we didn't talk about anything that had to do with city business. We discovered that of all places, we had Chester, South Carolina in common, and we talked a lot about Chester and the people that we knew there, and um, as he became more of a friend than just um, somebody I was working with, we wasted even more time, so we had to really keep ourselves in check so that by the time we got to the last 30 minutes, we did start talking about business. And I will miss meeting with you every other week, and I wish you well. I will tell you this, I, I've never known anybody who retired and didn't find out, didn't ask themselves the question, when did I ever have time to work? So you will be fine. Thank you for everything, Lee, and we will miss you. Thank you, council members. Also, uh, Lee, uh, Council Member Burke called me this morning in, from Miami, and she had some transportation issues, so she wishes you the best and wishes she could be here today. Also got a call from Bo Mills with the Metropolitan Mayors. He's had a family emergency, and he couldn't be here as well. So they're thinking about you. So now we're going to move on with the program. I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Don Martin, Chairman of the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners, to come up. He'll be followed by Ann Jones, who is our retired budget and evaluation director. She's going to speak in, on behalf of the retired city staff. Uh, then Johnny Taylor, our interim city manager, will come up and speak on behalf of the current city staff. And then Jane Garrity Pettit will come up and speak on behalf of the uh, Lee's family. I can't wait to hear about that. And so we'll then do some presentations. So Commissioner Martin, please. Thanks, Mayor, and uh, good afternoon. Um, I do want to introduce a couple of folks from the county who are here. Um, I'd like to introduce our vice chair, on Gloria Wisenhunt. Um, we also have uh, Dan Bessie. Where is Dan sitting? See, now Dan came over. He's not sitting with the county folks. <laughs> he, he is a commissioner, but he's also not sitting with the city folks. Um, so I told him he couldn't sit with the city folks. No, I was just, I was just teasing. It's uh, been a pleasure to get to know Dan. Um, I sit next to him uh, at our commissioner meetings. And also, Commissioner Shea Woodbury um, is here. I'd also like to introduce, thank you, Shea, thank you. And I'd also like to introduce uh, Sheriff uh, Bobby Kimbrough. Sheriff, stand up. Anyway, thank you. Of course, the sheriff is a little more independent than uh, the rest of them. No, I'm just teasing. Um, we have two staff members here. We also have uh, our uh, county manager, Dudley Watts. And we also have our assistant county manager. I saw her earlier, Chantel Robinson. She's in the back, uh, way back there. Thank you, guys. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> Lee, I want to congratulate you uh, to, begin, uh, to begin with. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed reading the article in the Winston-Salem Journal today. And I got to thinking about somebody who says that his hobby is working. Um, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to encourage you to take your own advice and not accept any long-term work assignments for six months, because there are gonna be a lot of folks asking, well, would you like to get involved in this thing and that thing? And uh, that's very very wise self-advice, and I hope you heed it. Um, on June the 15th, uh, Forsyth County uh, Commissioners adopted a resolution, proclamation, recognizing Lee's um, accomplishments. But before reading and presenting that to him, I did want to talk just very briefly about my association with Lee over the years. I met him back in 1998 um, when the city formed, some of you may remember, the Citizens Efficiency Review Committee. Big deal. And, and I was serving as superintendent at the time, and I was asked to serve, as actually chair one of the study committees on emergency management. And I, I remember meeting Lee, and, I, and by the way, he attended every one of those meetings during that time. And at that time, Lee had just assumed to become the new director 
of the Office of Organizational Effectiveness. Now, kind of a new office, and he had just moved into that after being with the city for about seven years prior to that. And, and basically, my memory of that committee's work um, 25 years ago is a little fuzzy. Notice I said only a little, only a little fuzzy, uh, but it's a little fuzzy. And I actually wanted to see if I could find a little more info on it, so I actually Googled the Citizens Efficiency you know, Review Committee. And do you know I found a report that was written in 2002 uh, that was funded by the Sloan Foundation. And if I can find the title here, um, it is Focusing on Government Efficiency and Public Confidence written by David Bernstein in 2002. And it was a case study of that committee's work. And basically, there were seven committees, 300 recommendations, and a couple of them, and Lee led a lot of these things. And I, I think this is the beginning of your becoming city manager, was exactly these issues. Because basically, um, one of the key issues was that uh, the recommendation led the city to begin surveying citizens every other year. That's still in place and also to begin to adopt the use of performance measurement in all departments, which was, I mean, that, that was a big transition in the 90s, early kind of stuff, and that kind of, is, that's been there. And I'd like to think that that, that beginning in Lee's career um, actually got him, we got him going, got him started, and, uh, and certainly I've known him throughout that time. We've, we didn't cross, as, our past didn't cross quite as much in the school business, but it was, uh, but I saw him, I've always respected him, and he's always been very kind. We've talked about a number of particular issues, SROs regarding in the city at the time. Um, so I, I do want to, because uh, I consider him a friend. But uh, we have a proclamation, I'm gonna read it, and when I do that, I'm gonna ask uh, our county manager to come forward, because um, he's actually gonna, and, and the other commissioners, if you would, I know you'd love to come up, you can shake Lee's hands is a way to do this, and get uh, Commissioner Bessie and, and uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Wisenant and Commissioner uh, uh, Woodbury. Um, and the sheriff, you're welcome to come up too. Could be a part of this, we'll have a resolution, which would be great. Now, Dudley made this frame, and Dudley's gonna present it. He actually made this frame. Um, he's a carpenter, that's cedar wood, great, great job. Um, and you can be a carpenter too, Lee. That's something else, <laughs> something else that you can do. Um, but for those of you who don't know it, Lee and Dudley had breakfast. They had breakfast very frequently. And I, I do want to, I'm going to read the proclamation in a second, but on a very, very serious note, if you think about these two, this community has been very fortunate to have two leaders that have been working together over 17 years, um, two leaders actually serving this community in the city and town. Now the proclamation, Lee, here you go. A proclamation recognizing the accomplishments of Lee D. Garrity on the occasion of his retirement as city manager of Winston-Salem. Whereas Lee Garrity has served the citizens of the city of Winston-Salem since December 3rd, 1990, and whereas Lee Garrity was appointed city manager on July 14th, 2006, and has diligently and capably served in this capacity for more than 17 years. Whereas Lee Garrity leaves a legacy of collaboration and professionalism as evidenced by the new city-county initiatives, including the creation of Map for Scythe, the joint city-county geographic information system, the GIS efforts, consolidation of city and county evidence storage, and a consolidation of law enforcement forensics unit. Whereas Lee Garrity has advanced the profession of city management through his service as a leader who has maintained strong values and, and integrity, transparency, compassion, and humility. Whereas Mr. Garrity has provided steady and innovative leadership through many difficult challenges, including the Great Recession and the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic. Now therefore, be it resolved that Forsyth County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes the exemplary service and accomplishments of Lee D. Garrity and thanks him for his outstanding and distinguished service the citizens of Winston-Salem and Forsyth County proclaim the 15th day of June, 2023. Please come up and let uh, <laughs> County Manager Watts get it. Please. The 
the chairman didn't say I could do this, but we talked about it, so I was just going to step up and just say a, say a few words. I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but anyway, um, Lee, it's been an absolute joy to, um, to work with you over the last 17 years um, in this role. Uh, from Really, from day one, um, when we started meeting uh, periodically for breakfast, um, uh, you know, you and I were completely aligned around our roles um, in helping boards facilitate things that improve the human condition. And, um, you know, it, was, it has been an absolute joy to do that, but, you know, we also raised our kids and, and, and did a lot of consulting with each other about all those kinds of things, and it, and it really has been a joy. I, I CMA a couple of years ago did sort of a, a, a promotion of the, of the profession around, you know, living a life well lived, and, you know, since you spend so much time at work, that's just a huge part of it, and you have done that so well. And, and through that, it really talks about honoring your family, honoring your community, and honoring the profession. And on behalf of the profession, um, thank you so much. So. Thank you, Lee, for letting me be the person there are lots of good speakers out here from the uh, retirement community. Thank you for asking me to, to speak to you on this occasion. Yes, I did hire you back in 1991, and you were an outstanding budget analyst. So good, you moved quickly up the ladder, eventually all the way to the top. Retirement after such a dynamic career could be daunting, but as Tom Griffin advocated, you just need to have a plan, which I know you do. Still, I have a few retirement suggestions. First, as everyone else has already said, I think you should take a good breather before you get recommitted to anything. And family time is always a great place to start. I know you and Kathy have great value as babysitters already. <laughs> and then there are all the books you haven't had time to read while working. They are calling your name. And don't forget to catch up on te technology now that you won't have in-house IT support. Uh, Tom Koreska is here, and I've already told him how much I'm still missing the city's helpline, even if it just tells me to pl unplug it and plug it back. <laughs> uh, and, and enjoy not being on all the time. I keep up with city news in the journal, but it is good to know that it is not my beat and that I will not be quoted. Uh, I think everyone should have an aspirational uh, kind of, you know, some, something you're passionate about that you would like to get involved in when you're retired. And one item on my retirement list has been to learn to yodel. Like Dwight Yoakam, who can't sing anything without kind of moving into a yodel. I haven't quite cracked the trick of yodeling yet, but I still have hope. For inspiration, I found a yodeling pickle online. Lee, I've brought one for you. And just in case your retirement ever needs to be spiced up. <laughs> okay, thanks again, and happy trails. <laughs> Good afternoon. On behalf of the employees, Mr. Garrity, I'm honored to congratulate, congrat, congratulate you today on your retirement after 32 years of service. Selfless dedication to the council, to employees, and also the residents of Winston-Salem. During your tenure, there have been many successes, as well as some tremendous challenges that you've had to face and overcome. While you may have come to the end of this season of 24-7 email or phone response expectations, hearing from residents, either happy or unhappy, trying to figure out how to complete projects with limited resources, or leading an organization through a pandemic. You now have transitioned to a new and exciting season, an exciting season of rest, 
a season of play with your grandson, a disconnect from government, travel, late days of sleep, and work on projects around the house, or the best one of all, do absolutely nothing. So I will end this with a quote from an unknown author, and that is, retirement is not the end of the road. It is the beginning of an open highway. Congratulations again, Mr. Garrity. We wish you God's speed. Enjoy the trip. Thank you all for being here to celebrate my dad's long and successful career. When my mom actually is the one who asked me to, if I wanted to be the family representative, I thought, oh yeah, no big deal. I do public speaking all the time in trial, but it's, it's a lot more nerve wracking when you're talking about the most important role model that you've had in your life, my father. So if you're familiar with my dad at all, then you know that he's not a person who seeks out the spotlight. He's a behind the scenes type person, and he's also very humble. So you all might be surprised to know that my dad actually has a long history of family connections with Winston-Salem and Wake Forest. And um, our family who's here, they know this as well. But my dad actually lived in Winston-Salem when he was little, five years old. Um, and his grandfather, uh, my great-grandfather, Hank Garrity, was the coach of the Wake Forest basketball, football, and baseball teams in the 1920s. Um, during that time, Wake actually performed so well that that's when the term demon was added to the deacons. So if you ever look up that tidbit of history, you'll run into the Garrity name. I'm not sure where the athletic ability went as far as when you get down to, to me, but it's all right. Um, so even with all that history, um, my dad's career didn't initially take him to Winston-Salem, but first to D.C. and the federal government. Ultimately, he chose to make Winston-Salem his home, where he worked, and where he raised a family. And the city of Winston-Salem has been extremely enriched by that choice he made. Many of you may know and may actually have talked with my dad after hours. I know all the table to the left has. Um, and so you know the city manager job is not a regular job. It's an intensely demanding and time-consuming job. It requires middle-of-the-night phone calls from police and fire, long hours, and countless meetings. Um, but it takes a unique, intelligent, and humble person to serve as city manager, and that's what it is, service, and let alone serve as city manager for 17 years. During his 17 years, my dad has mentored countless new, countless new employees, and I see some of them in the audience, Evan Raleigh. Um, so um, he's created new departments, including the City Link Department, as well as the Department of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, which I think is the most recent department. Um, he's gone boots on the ground to, um, with utility and police departments. He's done ride along, much to my mother's chagrin, um, and just to see how they perform daily tasks. And he always listens to my husband when he starts talking about the police this, police that. Um, I can remember also just growing up with him um, as manager. We'd be at a family dinner downtown, or he'd go on date night with my mom, and he would still do work. He would drive by neighborhoods, city neighborhoods, drive through them, um, despite some of them being a little bit dangerous, um, but um, just to see and look at reported issues. That's the type of manager he was and the type of person he is. He, he, he will do for himself. Um, he delegates, to be sure, but he would make sure that the job was done, even if it meant going and doing it himself. 
So ever since my dad was the department um, head of, and apparently it's organizational efficiency, I wrote organizational excellence, so which just underscores my next sentence, but it's been difficult for me to explain to friends and classmates what he did for a living. It's easier doctor, lawyer, you know, um, city manager, a lot of people don't know even what that is. Perhaps, though, when I was reflecting on this speech and what my remarks would be, what came to me is that perhaps it was so hard for me to explain because it really involves being a jack of all trades. Um, my dad often would tell me that he had to know a little bit about everything. Um, and he really did. He knew a little bit about everything. I know there have been past distinguished managers and there'll be future successful managers here in Winston-Salem, but I can confidently say that there will never be a city manager of the caliber of my father. No one will devote themselves to the city of Winston-Salem like my dad has. His retirement will be a great loss to the city, but a huge blessing to our family. He will have time with my mom. Um, he always made time for her, um, but he'll have even more time. They won't just have to have lunches and evenings together. Um, my sister and her husband, and then myself and my husband and his grandson, Oliver Lee Pettit. So when naming my son, there was no better role model I could think of than my father. Um, and so his middle name is Lee. And I'm really looking forward to the quality time we'll have. I do need you to commit to one long-term project, which is the to-do list on our house. <laughs> um, but um, I really am seriously looking forward to more quality time with you um, and to see pictures of all your travels with mom. Thank you. I love you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for sharing those special thoughts. So Lee, in the spirit of efficiency, I'm going to change the program a little bit here. So the City Council and I are going to present you a resolution, then a, present something else at the end. So I'm going to suggest that we hold the resolution and we do both of them at the same time. So we now move and I ask Representative Amber Baker uh, if she would come forward and present a special award from the state of North Carolina, followed by parting gifts from our uh, assistant city managers, if you all would come up after Representative Baker. Well, I bring you greetings from the North Carolina General Assembly. I am Representative Dr. Amber Baker. I represent District 72. Uh, some of you may have known me in my previous position as the principal of Kimberly Park Elementary School for 14 years. The best little school in Winston-Salem. I still stand by that. <laughs> One of the things that you get to do um, in, in this position when you may not be able to affect legislation too much is you get to honor the people in your city who are doing great things. You get to be of service to those that send you to Raleigh in the form of celebration. And so the honor that I am bestowing upon Lee today is the highest honor that can be given to someone who has been of service to both the city and the state. And not everyone can get this award. It is the Longleaf Pine Award and it is bestowed upon the citizens by the governor. And there are a long list of people who have gotten it over the years, so I'm super excited to have been able to put in for this award for Lee and to have it read today in its entirety um, before your family and your friends and your colleagues. And it simply reads, State of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, Governor. Reposing special confidence in the integrity, learning, and zeal of Lee Garrity, I do by thee 
present, confer, the order of the longleaf pine. With the rank of ambassador, extraordinary privileges to enjoy fully all rights granted to members of this exalted order, among which is the special privileges to propose the following. North Carolina Toast in select company anywhere in the free world. I don't know exactly what that means, but you throw it around when you get <laughs> to a bar or two. <laughs> Go on and make a copy of this and carry it. <laughs> said the governor said, here's to the land of the longleaf pine, the summer land where the sun do shine, where the weak grow strong and the strong grow great. Here's to down home, the old North State. Congratulations, Lee. <laughs> Don't lose this. <laughs> it's money in the bank. <laughs> and take your wife with you. <laughs> and you go on and make a copy too and say, it's, the two of us are as one. So this was given to my husband, but I'm the one that made all the compromise and sacrifice for him to serve 32 years. So you do that. Any money that come, gift cards, all that. Take half. None of us wants to talk. <laughs> but I am Patrice Tony. I am one of the assistant city managers, and um, I am so grateful that Lee hired me, um, brought me from the county over here from Dudley um, to, to come to the city. I was on the dark side, now I'm on the light. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but thank you, thank you, uh, Lee, for trusting me as. Uh, budget director first and um, currently as assistant city manager and so uh, Lee hired all of us back here um, so he's made some really great decisions. Thank you Lee. Um, this is assistant manager Ben Rao, Aaron King, Mr. Johnny Taylor um, and he's launched the careers of so many people uh, in our government. How about all the assistant, former assistant city managers and staff that he this been under leadership, uh, Lee's leadership. Please stand. <laughs> so you've made tremendous contributions, Lee, um, investing in us and all of these people um, to this whole state, to the careers that you've launched. So we are grateful to you. Uh, if you want to come forward, we have a plaque to, to give to you. And we have a gift. It's $100,000. No, not, not really. Uh, we did collect a few resources. Hopefully it will um, contribute. Pre-audit that. Lisa, can you pre-audit this for us? <laughs> All right, but we want to say thank you so much. And, and congratulations on your retirement. And thank you for everything. We uh, also want to recognize Sheriff Bobby Kimro, who I believe has a recognition that he would like to present to Lee as well. So, Sheriff, if, would you come forward and do that, please? Sheriff Kimbrough. Uh, I 
appreciate that. Uh, first of all, Ms. Garrett, I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of your celebration. I appreciate the moments that we had, our breakfast meetings at uh, Midtown. I'm grateful for that. Uh, I really appreciate those conversations. When I look out into this room, it's obvious that a lot of people appreciate you. I see some legends in the room. I see Coach Hayes. I see a lot of folk. I see Martha Wood. I see the great attorney over there. Uh, so many people in this room. It's obvious a lot of people appreciate you. But one of the things that stands out the most to me, I've been to a lot of events, and I've never seen the mayor stay this long. So <laughs> I can truly say, I can truly say, I can truly say that I, 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 I can, I can truly say, and, and it was, it was truly worth him overlooking me for that. So I appreciate that. But on behalf of the uh, Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, we just wanted to present this to you, presented to City Manager Lee Garrity. Your years of service to the city of Winston-Salem have left an indelible footprint. Your presence and your commitment to the city of Winston-Salem have made a difference in the community. And for that, we simply say thank you and we love you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sheriff, I thought we were friends, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple of things we want to uh, share with Lee uh, at the end of the program. We asked Mayor Pro Tem uh, to read this resolution that the council did approve at the last meeting. City of Winston-Salem resolution honoring city manager Lee D. Garrity. Whereas Lee D. Garrity has served the citizens of the city of Winston-Salem since December 3rd, 1990. And whereas Mr. Garrity joined the city staff as a senior budget and evaluation analyst and was subsequently promoted to organizational effectiveness director on December 5th, 1997, and to assistant city manager on April 30th, 2001. And whereas Mr. Garrity was appointed city manager on July 14th, 2006, and has diligently and capably served in this capacity for almost 17 years. And whereas Mr. Garrity modernized city government to make operations more efficient and to meet the emerging, need, emerging needs of the 21st century, to include combining the city county inspections division and the city county planning development into the Department of Planning and Development Services, combining streets and stormwater into the field operations department, combining the minority women business enterprises staff and the small business assistance staff into the Office of Business Inclusion and Advancement, creating the Office of Sustainability and adding a diversity, equity, and inclusion division to the human relations department. And whereas Mr. Garrity provided steady innovative leadership through many difficult challenges, including the Great Recession, the COVID-19 pandemic, and implementation of the 2014 and 2018 bond projects, all while ensuring the, that, that the city remained on sound financial footing and maintained the highest possible credit rating from all major credit rating agencies. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the mayor and the city council of the city of Winston-Salem hereby honor Mr. Lee D. Garrity and express their deepest gratitude for his years of dedicated service to the citizens of Winston-Salem, be it further resolved that a portrait of Mr. Lee D. Garrity be displayed in City Hall along with the portraits of Mr. C.E. Perkins, Mr. John M. Gold, Mr. Orville W. Powell, and Mr. Bryce A. Stewart, previous city managers of the city of Winston-Salem, dated this 20th day. Is that 20th or 26th? 20, 20, 20. 20. <laughs> we, voted on it. we voted on it on the 20th. I thought they made a mistake. Dated this 20th day of June 2023, Allen joins mayor and the Winston-Salem City Council. One. So Lee, um, why don't you come on up, <clears throat> please. 
Because I got to go, so I hurry. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> the Lee, uh, obviously, the resolution is uh, it's something you can keep there, but we also wanted to do something that was a little bit, uh, a bit more visual. Okay. So, Fire Station Number Thirteen on Bethel School, Bethel Church Road, will now be known as the Lee D. Gary. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> So, this is a rendering of how that will look. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank Sheriff, uh, I mean, uh, Fire Chief Mayo for agreeing to that. Mayor, That's right. <laughs> so, Lee, we'd invite you to make comments. Right. So we'll, we'll get off the stage and let All you right. do that. Okay, thank you. Wow, this is something. Um, those of you who know me, most, pretty much everybody in this room knows me. Typically at city events, I'm in the back um, talking to the marketing folks, uh, making sure everything happens. I'm not somebody who likes to be at the front. This was an event I couldn't figure out how I could stay in the back, so, uh, so here I am up front. Um, there's so many people I want to thank. First, um, Mayor Joins, Mayor Pro Tem Adams, members of city council. Thank you. Thank you for the, all the opportunities you've afforded me over the years. There's so many other people in the audience that I'm, a, I'm not going to call names or I'll, I'll leave some people out. But I want to say that all of the community leaders that are here, all the citizens, all my teammates that worked with me now or in the past, um, thank you, all the elected officials from, from other places in the city and the state. I really, really value being here. And I do want to mention that um, my siblings are here. They came from up and down the East Coast um, to see the last one of the four of us retire. So, um, thank you. My, my brother-in-law, my, uh, my wife's brother from Chester, South Carolina, that says he's, um, is here. So, um, thank you guys and Rhonda for coming and, and Tyler as well, their son. So, I appreciate you coming. All right, the, uh, when I started to figure out what I was going say to say tonight, our soon-to-be-retired marketing and communication director, Frank Elliott, he's in the back, so he, um, he said I was supposed to reflect on my career. So, okay. Again, you know, it's not an easy thing for me to do. It's not something typically that I would talk about, but I'm going to give it my best shot, uh, and I promise to be quick. The, you know, I thought about you know, what I'm going to miss the most, and it's all of you. It, it's all the relationships, and I heard that over and over again with the speeches. It's all the relationships um, that I developed over the years. I mean, the mayor and council, I mean, I, hundreds of one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of you and your predecessors as well, um, really developed friendships. Um, I always thought that made it harder for you to fire me if I was your friend, but, but <laughs> Kidding, kidding. But 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 seriously, I really enjoyed those all those meetings and working together, trying to help each one of you. Uh, I've I said this when I years ago when I first became manager. You know, I know a lot of elected officials, and they all want something. They all want to improve the community. They just have different ideas of how to get there and who's going to pay for it. But but they want to improve the community. So so I treasured the time I got to work with all of you. And try to try to in, in some way help you, and and the community at the same time. The employees, my teammates, yeah, I love so much going out in the field. Uh, sometimes I go out and try people's jobs. I think the employees really love seeing me fail at doing their jobs. My favorite story was the, uh, the pothole crew. I think they really revved up that street tamper thing because it was attacking me all over the. <laughs> But it was fun. Um, but I really, really enjoyed those times with the employees. Uh, so many, so many teammates. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss the, the daily conversations. My daily conversations with our parking attendant about football, uh, the security guards, the custodians, all those individual contacts every day. I'm going to really miss them. Community folks. Some of them are here in the audience today. Every citizen, you know, their their quality of life is is what we're here for. And so for every citizen, what their issue is, 
is going to be different. You know, in one neighborhood, it's they want a speed bump. In number, another neighborhood, they want to be able to sleep at night without gunfire and so on. But every citizen uh, that I touched and tried to help, I value those friendships and relationships. Um, that's really what, what I was here to do, is try to help you um, have a better life. Um, and then finally, um, they were just up here, but the folks in my, the six individuals in the city manager's office, they were in the trenches with me, day in and day out. I will miss those friendships. I will miss them deeply. Thought about what stands out to me in this career, and I remember, well, there was no one here except Robert Clark and the mayor, but, but I remember when, when I was uh, interviewing for the job, the brochure for um, city manager, they, the council said they wanted, they wanted a manager was accessible. Okay, so I took that to heart. Now I'm going to be accessible. Of course, technology made it a little easier as time went on. But um, my my family will probably tell you maybe I took that too far. But I can remember um, taking phone calls from Winston Salem Journal reporters, knee deep in the ocean. Uh, another time, I literally left a Miranda Lambert concert to go to the back to talk to a reporter. Um, one of my other favorite stories is I was getting some eye surgery. Um, from the same eye doctor that Chairman Martin uh, sees. I was getting, getting, getting wheeled in, and the nurse recognized me. And she said, oh, you're Mr. Garrity. I said, okay, yeah. And she said, um, I talked to you on the phone. I said, you did? And she said, yes, yeah, so I hit a pothole and tore up my, tore up my wheel. <laughs> if you know anything about city government, we usually don't pay those claims, but... Um, in, I said, what happened? And she said, oh, the contractor, it was a contractor paid the claim. So she was happy and I came out with my eyesight too, which is <laughs> good for me. So, um, but seriously, I, I really, really, I'm not complaining. I loved it. I loved being accessible all the time. I, I really, really did. I'm gonna miss all that contact. I'm gonna miss the people and all the professional opportunities, particularly that the mayor and council afforded me. You know, um, to think more about it, I, I, I'm looking forward to you know, a lot of stuff I'm going to do, do in my career before I, before I get to the next sec section. The other thing I really, really loved in my career, and they mentioned this earlier, is mentoring young professionals. Um, some of them are here today. A lot of them are here today. Um, the most, I really, really enjoyed that. I don't think I probably taught them as much as they taught me. They certainly kept me young, um, but I value that so much. I've seen them go on to other cities as managers and assistants. I've seen some that are still here today. Uh, some of them might even get my job, who knows? But I really, really enjoy passing that wisdom on to young, young professionals and trying to encourage them in this, in this career of, of service to citizens that we're in. So I, I'm going to miss that. But I am looking forward to retirement. Um, I'm looking forward to spending time with my wife, with my grandson. Uh, he's, he's a handful, so I'm looking forward to that. I am looking forward to doing, I'm halfway handy, I'm not real handy, but I'm halfway handy, so I'm looking forward to doing some home repairs. As my daughter Jane said, she's already got a Google task list for me, so I'll be working on that. Um, looking forward to travel. And I'm also just going to slow down. For six months, I'm just going to kind of detox and slow down a little bit and kind of reset before I try to take on any other major endeavors in my life. Last, not, last but not least, my family, my personal family, immediate family. Jane, the words you said, they meant a lot to me. I'm proud of you. I'm proud that you chose a career in public service. Thank you. Emily. Emily's my international banker in Raleigh. I don't know what she does, but she does it well. Uh, <laughs> um, really well. And um, uh, she works for a bank in Germany, so she's uh, has to go early in the morning, right? Six-hour time difference, right? <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to helping with your new house and listening to all the things. And hopefully it won't be too long for... We'll be helping you with some grandchildren too, right, right, Thomas? <laughs> all right, he said, all right. <laughs> L last, my wife, Kathy, um, she's been through it all. She's heard it, seen it. Um, she's had me leave, and she's seen me leave countless 
family events um, and always been supportive of me. She's, you know, had me, you know, when I've come home in the middle of the night, no matter what's going on, she's always, always been there for me. Um, I love with all my heart and soul. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to, to, to spending a lot of time just with her. So, Kathy, thank you so much for being my wife. Again, thank you all. I think Mr. Watts said he's funding the after party, so we're going <laughs> to. So, thank you all so much. Bye bye.